All right, I, I won't waste a lot of time up here. Uh, we'll go right into our first session, which is Kaya Tanner, the CEO of AppLift, is gonna go into some strategies for uh, ad monetization. So without further ado, Kaya. Thank you very much. Yeah, in fact, thanks for showing up. I'm very surprised I'm here, to be honest. <laughs> it was a long night, so if my voice sounds a bit husky, you know why. Um, yeah, happy to be here and uh, tell you a little bit more about uh, trends in ad-based monetization specifically for mobile games. Before uh, starting, let me quickly introduce uh, what AppLift does. So we are a mobile games marketing platform. We are 80 people now spread across San Francisco, Berlin, and Seoul. And yeah, as you, uh, as you might, uh, might think, we monetize the mobile traffic of uh, mobile games as well as other apps through offering advertising only um, game, games, mobile games. So, so we work with roughly uh, uh, 200 game publishers and uh, over 1,000 um, monetization partners. Yeah, before I start um, this presentation, so I, I want to share our experience and insights, and I'm going to structure it in the following way. First, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the general concept of monetization. What are the key trends? What's been happening? What's, what's available? Then I'm going to compare the old approach of um, yeah, more traditional sort of advertising and uh, native ad units, which I'm sure you've all heard of uh, emerging pretty fast uh, over the past year, I would say. And at the, at the very end, I'm going to give you some hands-on tips on what uh, to take care of when thinking about your monetization strategies. So here we see um, yeah, the app value chain development, user acquisition, monetization in a very simple way. I'm going to concentrate, as said, only on the last bit. What are the different uh, models of uh, monetization? Uh, we have basically advertising, we have free apps with in-app purchases, we have paid apps uh, with in-app purchases, and we have paid apps. The last two categories are pretty hard to promote, so in terms of uh, advertising, so that model is decreasing. Right now we have already 90% of apps that are free with in-app purchases and this amount is expected to increase to almost 95% in 2017. Monetization through ads is a very viable option. Um, so what you can actually do there is to monetize the high volumes of non-monetizing users, but there is always with advertising there is a certain trade-off. You, you risk to churn your own users. Now, if you do two spammy ads, people will churn away from the, ad, from the app. So that's, uh, that's there to take care of. If we look um, at, some, at some numbers here, so we see the App Store revenue, 77% uh, of, the, of the revenue comes from in-app purchases from free apps, paid apps, and paid revenue, which in turn means almost one quarter of the, of the revenue comes from ads. Yeah. If I go deeper a little bit, here you see why is uh, advertising such a, such a good solution, or why can it be such a beneficial option? You see from, uh, from a typical user base of these in-app uh, purchases or free-to-play apps, only 3% roughly do actually ever pay, which means 97% of your users you're not actively monetizing. So basically showing ads to those users, there is a, a tremendous revenue opportunity that we estimate based on our data to roughly 20 to 30% at least. These are the basic ad, ad units right now um, in, in, in place, or the common formats. So we have banner ads, we have offer walls, we have interstitial ads, and we have video ads. I'm pretty sure you are familiar with those. So basically, I gave a little overview here of uh, what, type, what type of ads are there. So if we go um, exemplary into the banner ads, so these tend to be non-rewarded, meaning they are non-incentivized generally. They are more intrusive. Because, yeah, the ad just pops up and it's a, it's a sp more spammy sort of uh, banner ad. The impressions of, of banner ads, they tend to be very high. Uh, ECPM levels tend to be low, generally paid out on a CPC basis, and exemplary players in that field would be AdMob or iAd. Yeah? I think I don't have to go through all of them, but just to name a few of the walls, yeah, we have sponsor pay, tap show, supersonic ads, for example, interstitial ads. Most networks work with them, chart boost, for example, and then video ads, you have Ad Colony and Bungle. Um, I think interesting here to understand, I compared the different uh, eCPM levels, low ECPMs for banner ads, high ECPMs for offer walls. 
uh, medium eCPMs for interstitial ads and high eCPMs for video ads. I think this is a, from a monetization perspective, you hear this all the time, how high is the eCPM? How high is the eCPM? So what I, what I did in my uh, next chart is I want to explain actually what eCPM is and what you should look at. Yeah? So eCPM is a function of the eCPC if you're on a CPI model. Uh, it's a function of the impressions and the click-through rate. But very important to see, I, I put down what drives the eCPM up. So basically a higher click-through rate or a higher conversion rate or a higher CPC will drive it up. But one thing that is very important to consider when thinking about monetization and understanding eCPMs is the frequency. So what does this mean? Yeah, you have, for example, if you compare two cases, in one case you have 10 users, you show 100 impressions to each of those users. In the second case, you have four users, you show 250 impressions to each user. In both cases, we have shown 1,000 impressions. But the eCPM, because if a, if a user in, in one session, if I would get, let's say, 250 uh, ad impressions, it's very unlikely that I click often on the ad and actually download an app. So my eCPM will be much lower. So this means that uh, the frequency you show an ad during a session is very, very important and is a factor that is, uh, I think, Sometimes people are just focusing on the number eCPM without taking this factor into account, which can be a very, very important uh, influencing factor in determining the eCPMs. If you look a little bit at the performance of uh, the different formats, so we've got classic banners. They are around yeah, 0.5% or so click-through rates, maybe 60 cents to $1 in eCPMs, what they, what they yield on mobile. Then we've got the interstitial ads. They're around maybe yield three to five dollars eCPM, um, yeah, up to five percent click-through rates. The offer walls generally they're incentivized, so you incentivize the user via virtual currency to actually um, to actually download something where he benefits inside of the game. So the eCPMs here tend to be much higher because users have a clear incentive to uh, to do the action required. And then you have video ads, which perform uh, also very well with eCPMs around $10 and uh, average click-through rates of uh, around up to 10 10%. Yeah. So as the second part of the presentation, as I said, I, want, I would like to um, compare the traditional forms of advertising with the more innovative new forms that are emerging with the trends that we are seeing. So traditionally, uh, you have the typical paradigm of retention monetization. It's a trade-off. I want to monetize my users. I'm showing them ads. If I show them spammy ads, I won't be able to keep those users inside of my app. So if we think about a pool of users that can monetize through ads, um, if I turn them away, obviously my, my, the potential that I, that I can monetize will decrease as well because I have just less people. So it's, a, it's an important trade-off. How much advertising do you show? Do you churn your users, etc. In a traditional, we have this trade-off. In the more innovative form, we actually have retention and monetization. And I'm going to give you a few examples later on of how this works. So in the traditional form, the user impact is rather intrusive. You see uh, a typical banner ad, for example, is considered more intrusive than a sort of a native ad that is integrated very well with the app's experience. Then the ad formats are the standard formats, um, innovative ones, native formats, and eCPMs are either low to mid. For the innovative formats, we see higher um, eCPMs. So what exactly is um, yeah, the, these innovative forms? What, what do you have to do? There are two strategies to be able to, to make those innovative native ad units. So first, you have to really maximize the level of integration of the, app, uh, of the ad unit inside of the app. That means by adding a, the ad has to be triggered in a very smart way. And I'm going to come to it in a second as well with, uh, with more examples. But generally, where, where, does the ad, where is the ad triggered? So if I trigger an ad in the middle of a game when I'm super excited, I'm very unlikely to click on it, right? Because I just don't want to see it. And uh, the placement is important, as well as adapting the ad to the, to the UI and the UX of, the, of your app, of your game. And second is to maximize the, the level of user engagement with the ad. So basically, yeah, we have the ad placement and trigger for the placement. It's important to align it with, uh, with the look and feel of your app to really make it uh, sort of blend in so it doesn't come across uh, as a very intrusive ad, but comes more across as a natural sort of um, 
ad that is placed within the content of the app. And, um, and the trigger you can either, cho either choose by natural triggers, meaning, for example, if I play a game, three rounds, I'm game over. An ad is triggered. This would be a good natural trigger, a good point where to show an ad. Or you can do it uh, as a user trigger. So the user actually has to press a button. You might all be familiar with uh, a more games button or so, where the user presses, and then the ad units come up, which, I, which is yeah, basically shown um, as well for offer walls, very typical, because the user wants the ad to be shown. And this is much less intrusive as well. And then on the second side, as I said, the second point is uh, engagement. So if the user can somehow interact with the ad unit, then, um, then the ad unit might become much more native in that sense. So if I can, I put an example here, mini games, if I have an ad unit that is sort of a game in itself, that is more engaging for the user. Yeah. Let me give you a, a few examples. So here we see um, optimizing the ad placement and trigger. As I said before, this is a typical um, ad unit where the user triggers the ad himself. Press on the More Games button, and you see a, a games list come up with, uh, which suggests more, more games. If I come back to, um, to our basic standard formats, so here I've mapped the level of integration into the app and the level of in-app user engagement. Uh, again, we have classic banners, static interstitials, offer walls, video ads, and then the native ads would yield basically the deepest integration into, into your game that's possible out of these uh, formats. So I can show you an example of what we've done. For example, we have a, here a game uh, called uh, Jumpy Frog. The, the main character of the game is a frog. So on the second screen here, um, the second screenshot, that, this is already the ad. So what we've done is take the exact uh, frog, place him on the ad, place three presents on it. This one is actually natural triggered. So you play the game, I think, uh, three times. And then once your game over, this uh, second screen is shown with th three gifts. You press the gift. Then you come to the next screen um, that is the wrapping paper, which I can then scratch open with my finger and reveal an ad beneath. So if I just look at this, or if you think of a banner ad, here I have a very clear um, context, the colors are the same, the character of the game is the same, so people would not perceive this ad as so much an intrusive advertising because it's just more naturally placed. It resembles the, the, the game exactly. And then uh, once I scratch free, I get the, the, my uh, interstitial ad just normal and can just download it uh, via the download button. Yeah. Same game. Also, what we, uh, we have different ad units. So what you saw in the first uh, example was a scratch screen. Here we have a mini game with a user engagement where the user can actually play a memory game. And behind those little cards, which also take the, the character of the game as a background, behind those little cards are, are apps that are being shown. If I match two, then the ad will trigger and I will be redirected to the App Store. What we've seen here in this example was average click-through rates of 19%. Average uh, conversion rates of 3.5% and average eCPMs of $10. If you now compare this to the performance of a banner ad or of, of a normal interstitial, uh, where we would be with a normal interstitial probably three to five US dollars, and with a banner ad we would be at uh, 50 cents or so. Second example, I also took uh, a non-game example just, just to show, show it to you. Here we have a celebrity app, a French celebrity app, and what we've done here is a user-triggered experience. So the first example that I showed was natural triggered. You play the game, game over, ad shows. Here it's user triggered. On the left-hand side, we have a, the little icons. We created a jeu channel, a games channel for this app. And once the user presses, he comes to the ad, which are the presents again. Then again, we have the wrapping gift paper that he can reveal. And, um, and last but not least, uh, the, the interstitial behind it. I think here it's also very visible, the, the app goes more after celebrity news, so we've taken colors, uh, pink, et cetera, that look, uh, that look much closer to the app. In this case, look um, yeah, more, more polished, maybe, I would say, um, just for the user to have that same experience. Yeah? And we have seen results here, um, also tremendous eCPMs in this case, $33, which is, bear in mind, due to the frequency, again, that I mentioned in the beginning. So the eCPM in this case, the frequency of the ad, because the user triggers it himself, I want to see the jeu channel. I want to see the games. I trigger the ad myself, so I'm much more likely to engage with it. 
which means that I'm more likely to download and the eCPM will go up just by plain not having that same frequency of the ad shown. I have another few other examples just, just to show. We have done something with Akinator here, um, customized it exactly the same. Same for Skype. And basically, um, so what we do is we have, uh, we have an SDK where we have predefined ad units that are sort of, uh, yeah, you can choose. Basically, we have a slot machine. We have the scratch screen. We have uh, the scratch screen in all sort of different designs. So if I have a medieval, uh, let's say, a shooting game or so, I would, I would go with a, with a format on the right just because it, it, looks, uh, it looks more natural. But then, as I showed before, these are the, the, the ad units that we offer in-house that are already preset and you can choose from them, or we can customize it exactly to the look and feel of your app and make it fully native. Ingredients for native ads. What is important um, to make sure that the performance of the, of the ads is as good as possible? I summarize it here. So best way to monetize your audience through native ads, most important point is to have the look, streamline the design of the ads to your app to embed it naturally into the UI. If you think of, uh, again, uh, the example of a banner popping up, we have roughly 30% of uh, clicks are due to just what's known as the fat finger problem. You don't want to actually press, but you press uh, on the banner because it's intrusive and it just pops up. And if, it's, if it looks more streamlined with the design, it's, it will fit much more naturally. Second, non-intrusive placement. So either you, you choose a, an automatic trigger, if you do so, Please choose an automatic trigger where the, app, uh, where the ad is shown as a, at a natural breakpoint of the game, making sure that uh, yeah, the user doesn't want or maybe cannot. In some games, for example, you have a time where you have to uh, wait until your lives reload. And um, this would be a perfect moment because the user can't play any, anyway. So it's a good moment to show, show an ad. Or go for a self-triggered app, which will um, bear higher eCPMs but probably not drive as much revenue, depending on how often the trigger is actually, is actually uh, triggered. Yeah. And then last but not least, you have the interactivity, the playfulness. Um, you can think of making it uh, engaging to the user by placing these sort of mini games in it, having a scratch screen, or whatever sort of format that, uh, that appeals to you. So yeah, with that, thank you very much. I'm uh, happy to answer some questions if we have time. All right, go ahead. <clears throat> what would be the ideal uh, CTR for a game to still uh, keep its users, but at the same time uh, have a good profit uh, on the ad? Because I see uh, you, you showed a picture with 19% uh, CTR. I think that's th this is not only a question of the CTR, but at the end of the day will also depend on the CPI you're getting as a payout once the user downloads. It will depend on the conversion rate once the user is in the App Store, which is outside of your realm of influence. So let's say uh, if the app has a, a very good App Store appearance and a very high ratings, it's much more likely the user will, will download it. Yeah? So the CTR itself, it can be very high, but if, the, if what comes afterwards is done in a very bad way, you wouldn't profit so much from it. Mm -hmm. So basically, if you show a high quality game, you wouldn't have a such a problem with it, but then it will also depend on the platform, country, combination, and what the game publisher is, um, is ready to pay out for that specific uh, offer. Okay. Do you find that most uh, developers are thinking about native, native ad units while they're developing the game, or is it something that's typically thought about after they've launched a game? I think you find both. I think if uh, some developers have a very clear strategy already um, wanting to develop monetizing through ads, whereas others just might come up with something and then think, hey, why am I not earning any money? It's time to place some, some ads inside, and, and that's where basically we come in. Yeah. Great. Any other questions? Hi. Um, I was wondering, what DAU, base, uh, at what DAU base does it become compelling to use ads uh, for monetization? Can you re repeat that question? So at what DAU level does... Uh, ah. So, hi. Uh, at, 
At what DAU level uh, does advertising become compelling for monetization purposes in a mobile gaming app? I mean, uh, you can you can start uh, with uh, with hundred thousand or so. I would say even lower, but uh, of course, the more users you have, if you have very big games like three million uh, DAUs or so, then you will be making a lot of money from ads. One last question. But as yeah. such, there is no there is no hard threshold. There is no hard threshold. It's uh, you have to try it out, and it will depend again on how you how you make the ads and how you boost that performance. Yeah, even if with uh, smaller DAUs, we have worked with. Uh, we are working with indie developers that uh, don't have such a big user base and still are getting something out of it. Yeah. Hi. Uh, here. Uh, I was wondering about the uh, media uh, well, side of ads. Like, I would love to show ads of movies in my game because they wouldn't be directly competing with the product. It's a different media. Uh, so what do you think about this? Like, could game developers ban showing game ads for other games and only show ads for movies and books and stuff like that which are like a different kind of consuming experience for the consumer so what's your take on this i think it's uh, yeah very very possible of course and there is many uh, many providers that offer these sort of ads as well be it uh, video ads of, of brands be it brand advertisement on interstitials at the end of the day i think the importance is um we we see like i it's a general concern, I think, if you think, okay, I have a game and I'm showing another game, so I will actually get the users out of it. But bear in mind, if you do it in a smart way, you will show it to the 97% of users who do not monetize in case you have in-app purchases. Yeah? So actually, you just have to compare how much am I making per user, what's the lifetime value, including the advertising, which is something that, uh, that only you will know. Um, what is the lifetime value of this user if I show a movie or if I show a game? And if, because the user base is more prone to, to download a game because they're already interested, the game outperforms, and you're showing it to people who don't monetize anyway, then it makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice Thanks job. very much.